Okay, now, based upon last four reaction, let's solve a problem before we go further. Now, the problem is like this. If I have benzoyl chloride and I'm adding hydrogen in presence of palladium catalyst poisoned with barium sulfate, that gives me A. I could get, get A from B as well. If I add SNCl2 in presence of HCl and then I further hydrolyze the intermediate, that will also fetch me A from B. I could get A even from C and adding ozone and zinc. So you have to find out A, B and C. Now this involved only the last three, among la, three of the last four reactions that we have studied in this chapter, carbonyl compound. So shouldn't be difficult for you to solve this. This obviously you should recognize that this is resentment reduction because this is carbonyl chloride and looking at the reagent you know and we have dealt with the explanation of this resentment reduction reaction. So should, there shouldn't be any trouble to identify A, that A is benzaldehyde. No problem. Now this reaction is a Stefan's reaction or a Stefan's reduction. Because looking at the reagent, you have to recognize the reaction. SNCl2, HCl, then hydrolysis. Now B is a cyanide because Stefan's reduction is done on cyanide and the nitrogen of that cyanide goes off in ammonia gas. So we know this reaction and B should be a cyanide. Now looking at the structure of A, that it won't be difficult to find out the structure of B because in this aromatic ring, there will be no reaction. Whatever the reaction has to occur, it has to occur outside the ring. Outside the ring, I can cite one carbon. So that carbon has to be in cyanide group like this. So this is benzonitrile a cyanobenzene. So this is B. Now this is the reaction that we know very well by now. This is a reductive ozonolysis. Now ozonolysis is, is, is a lysis. It, it's, a, it's a breakdown of a molecule of the reactant. Now it should give two or more than two product but here we can see it's only one. So that means both the part after the lysis is A. So C should be a combination, if, if, if we have to find C, then, then C is giving two molecules of A. So if we bring this carbon, having C double bond or head to head and combine them as we did before, then there will be no problem in identifying that this must be C. So if you do the ozone lysis on this molecule, then both of this part will come out as benzaldehyde carbon that was making C double bond C will now make C double bond O and you'll have benzaldehyde from both the side. So this is uh, what A, B, C, and C are. Simple. Now we'll move on and study more reactions for preparation of aldehyde. Now this is, the next reaction is very interesting, very important. I suppose this is fifth. The reaction is rhymer timin reaction. In this reaction, we take phenol as the starting pro molecule, as, as, as the reactant, as the starting material. On phenol, we add chloroform in presence of a strong base like NaOH or KOH. What we get out of it is phenolic aldehyde. And this phenolic aldehyde is called salicylic aldehyde. Now, this is very important because the mechanism, a because the mechanism to understand the mechanism is very important because in this reaction we'll come to meet with a new intermediate called carbene and secondly 
In some of the reaction that we will study ahead in this chapter itself, this chloroform is produced as a side product. So those two reactions can be coupled together and from there they will ask you to identify this chloroform and that chloroform will be used here in this reaction. So when we will study that reaction, we will revisit primer time and reaction. But now what we have to understand is the mechanism of primer time and reaction. So what happens in this primer time and reaction is you, you think along with me and try to be ahead of me. This is phenol, this is chloroform. Chloroform is neutral, phenol is neutral and both are neither strong acid nor strong base. So they are not the one who are going to start the reaction. The reaction is started by strong reagent, whether it's a strong oxidizing agent or a strong reducing agent or a strong acid or a strong base. Here we have a strong base. So this is going to do something. What does base do? Base abstracts hydrogen. Where are all hydrogen? Hydrogen are at two places. One is at phenol, another is at chloroform. Which one do you think is more acidic? I think phenol should be more acidic. What do you think? You two think that phenol should be more acidic. The reason why we both think phenol should be more acidic is after hydrogen is removed from here, oxygen gets negative charge and that negative charge will undergo resonance with phenyl ring. Reason number one. Reason number two is oxygen is more electronegative. If you abstract hydrogen from here, negative charge will come on oxygen. If you abstract hydrogen from here, negative charge will come on carbon and poor carbon can't hold negative charge, can it? No. So if base will abstract hydrogen from phenol. When all the hydrogens from phenol are abstracted, then comes the turn of chloroform. So we'll start from chloroform, considering that all the hydrogen from phenol has been abstracted by the base and phenol has turned out to phenoxide. Now we are doing the reaction with chloroform. So a base and chloroform. Base will abstract hydrogen from here from water. And this negative charge will come on carbon and K plus will be somewhere surrounding the C minus. Now this is uh, the intermediate and this is uh, what we have after this reaction. Now what will happen next? Suppose all the hydrogen from this phenol has been abstracted, all the hydrogen from this chloroform has been abstracted, now nothing more that can be done by the base because there are no more acidic hydrogen. So the reaction will stop here unless you provide some heat. If you provide some heat, something very interesting will happen. Suppose you are carrying out the reaction at elevated temperature. Then what will happen is, we have talked in length before that leaving group leaves the substrate because leaving group are more stable independently. So they try to exist independently and leave the substrate and go away. Leaving groups generally we have seen this chlorine. Chloride ion is very stable and that's the reason HCl is a strong acid. Cl- is a stable because chlorine is, has high electronegativity value and the size of chlorine atom is big. It's, it's, it's a large atom because it belongs to third period in the periodic table. So that because of those two reasons Cl- is stable. If it is a stable it would be stable when it is independent of other bonding. So it can exist independently. So it can leave the substrate come out as Cl- and enjoy its life outside. So it's a living group. So here they are chlorine and there's a charge on carbon. If Cl- comes out taking away this charge then Cl- can exist independently and the burden of carrying its charge on, 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 an, on its head by carbon would be reduced. So that would increase the energy or decrease the energy of the system and increase the stability of the system. So when you provide heat what happens is Cl- comes out. When Cl- comes out it breaks the bond with carbon. So carbon ought to gain a plus charge. But that plus charge and this minus charge already on carbon neutralizes the carbon and carbon becomes neutral. So carbon becomes neutral having two chlorine now because one chlorine has gone out as chloride ion. So this is what you get. So as you can cite here carbon is neutral, carbon is making two bonds, carbon has four unpaired electron. Now two of them are engaged in making two bonds. The two of them must be lonely like this. To get a greater insight into this, because this is a very important reagent, we'll study ahead. 
This is carbene, by the way. This is the first first sight you must be having. This is a new kind of intermediate. Up till now, we were dealing with carbocation, carbo, carb, carb anion, and free radical. Now, this is the fourth kind of intermediate that we are looking for the first time, perhaps. This is called carbene. Carbene is an intermediate in which carbon has two unpaired electron and it is engaged in making two bonds. The two bonds here in this case is with chlorine and they are two unpaired electrons. This is carbene for you. What has happened is, 